Hi everybody, I'm Karina Velasco and welcome to Coffee, Tea or Sex. And today we have a very special guest, a very powerful, beautiful sex expert. I mean, she's amazing. She's one of the most uh, knowledgeable tantricas I know, which we, we'll, we'll understand that term in a minute. She supports a lot of women and men in their sexual empowerment. And she's like a wonderful coach in relationships and sex. So, Triambika. Hi, Karina. Good I'm, to be I'm so here. happy to have you here. Yeah, it's really exciting. I know. We've known each other for so many years now. And I mean, you work all over the world um, with all this, you know, problematics and issues around sexuality. So, today I want to touch base, I think, in one of the most important ones, which is how to spice it up in your relationship, you know, how to really commit yourself to sexuality if you're in a monogamous or in a marriage or in a yeah. partnership. Yeah, this is a, a huge epidemic, huge epidemic. I think all over America as well as just all over the world, because I hear it again and again. It's like one of the biggest topics is, you know, we used to have great sex. It was really great in the beginning and then it sort of fizzled out. It just, you know, it seems to be the thing that most couples are struggling with. But if that's happening all over the world, there must be a biological or scientific reason why people actually, like, at the beginning, it's like all over each other and then, yes. like, they stop even connecting. So, yes. why is that? Well, you know, in the beginning, in the early beginnings of a relationship, the brain chemistry is set up so that we pair bond, right? We have these really intense chemicals that are being released when you're first getting to know someone, and the whole purpose of why they're there is so that we can come together, we can bond, we can create family, and the survival of the planet can continue. <laughs> you know, so, so there's a really good reason why they're there. Sometimes these chemicals have been known to be even stronger than like heroin. Like that's how much they are pulling us together. And that's why we stop thinking and when we're in love, we're just like thinking about that person <laughs> and I feeling drawn, you know. Yeah, like, like I need more, I need more of I them. Miss you, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Exactly, and so, and so we come together with those chemicals in place and the sex is really great and the sex is drawing us together. And then after we've been together for a while, those chemicals just sort of fade away. What's well, that a while? Because I've heard theories that they say two years. Two years. Yeah? Two years is about right. Okay. Yeah. So affairs <laughs> usually start after two years. Well, that's another, that's that's another, another program. That's another but, program. Okay. Let's go with the spice it up. <laughs> we're not having affairs. We're having love issues. And so, you know, it's true. After two years and, you know, it kind of, it kind of just starts to change. And then, uh, it, you know, if kids come along, then it really changes because now they take a bigger role in your life together than, than your relationship does oftentimes. And so it really requires a very strong commitment, a very strong dedication to be in, to, to choose to make love, to choose to come together in this space because it is the sex that is what creates the sacred bond between you two. And you have to remember that. It's just totally necessary. If you don't have sex, then what's the purpose of us being together? Yeah, and that's something important because I think it, it comes up to information. You know, it's like we want to enhance the way we communicate or we relate. So we read books about like communication or we mm -hmm. go to therapy. But really, like sex is just something you do. But no, it's, it's like how can we harvest and how can we put some energy in also learning different avenues to have sexual connection, which is not necessarily the boom, 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 you know? Right, exactly. Exa well, and that's what happens is that um, a lot of couples get pretty bored. You know, they, they think that they know one another. They think that they've got this other person figured out. And so they sort of stick with the same thing and they um, kind of get into a rut with how they make love. So it's not only that they're not making love, then when they do make love, it's pretty predictable. And so this kind of keeps it like, well, I already know what it's going to be like. It's nothing new. It's nothing interesting. So, you know, it makes it less desirable. So you think it's more like it, it becomes like an automatic thing we do? It definitely does for a lot of couples. And another automatic thing that happens is not having sex. Like it gets really, really easy to sort of put on your jammies, watch a movie, and then go to bed. 
And so it's sort of like you just go on autopilot on both accounts, either not having it or having it. So I have a lot of friends uh, who are wives already and like have babies and they're like, I'm just not into sex. I, I don't feel like I want to have sex. I don't really like sex. I don't need sex in my life. What, why do you think it's the reason why that happens? Well, there's a lot of reasons why this happens and it's, a, it's very individual in some cases, but you know, oftentimes the, the, the man and the woman have not really taken the time to understand what the other person needs. So each partner has individual needs. And again, so in the beginning, it's just all chemicals. We don't need anything. We're just drawn together like magnets. Then over time, it's like, well, actually, I really need it to be softer or slower. Or, you know, he needs her to put on some lingerie and make, create a more of a visual experience for him. And, you know, they both have individual needs. And so, you know, there's got to be a desire to talk about this. And there's got to be a desire to want to serve and give to the other person because they are your partner. And they do show up in your life in so many ways. So we, we want to figure out what is our resistance. Now, some of it could be physical, and, and hormones do play a huge part. So, you know, that's all, also another program right there. But if there's a, an emotional resistance, oftentimes that plays the biggest part in the reason why couples aren't having sex. What do you mean by emotional resistance? Well, if, um, if there's a lack of communication, if there's uh, other issues in the relationship that haven't been sorted through. Um, it could be you know, family dynamics, it could be financial, or it could be that he spends too much time at work, you know, or, or maybe she spends too much time at work, <laughs> for those of us who do that. And so you know, these are things that kind of um, get in the way emotionally, and then it sort of doesn't allow for the free-flowing, loving connection that needs to be there in order for sex to happen to flow. So basically, this is all stuff that can be sorted through, talked about, use, you know, get a therapist for, but really, if you really, really want to have more sex and have better sex, you have to have a dedication to it. So what I really recommend is for couples to actually schedule their sex. Oh, really? <laughs> I know that <laughs> sounds funny. really boring. Yeah. But, and, and here's the thing, it's like, because we, we've learned to value spontaneity as the thing that makes, it hot, makes sex hot, mm. right? We think like, oh, when it suddenly it happens with somebody we barely know inside the car, <laughs> you know, yeah. or at the beach or something, that's what makes sex hot. Um, but the thing is that the reality is we actually in our, in our day to day life, we don't have the space for that type of spontaneity. We are busy people. Um, so those of you who have kids are definitely can't exactly just be spontaneous at any time. So scheduling sex makes makes it, you know, okay. This is our time. This is our. This is what we're gonna create, you know, in in our time together. And then what actually happens in that can be whatever you want. So it can be spontaneous, but it's you know on Saturdays at two o'clock. That's our date. And isn't it also like a good tool because sometimes spontaneity is when I really feel, you know, like having sex versus that it's where my commitment comes in because it's I have this schedule, maybe I'm not in the mood, so I'm going to create something and I'm, or I'm going to learn something new to create that mood at that time. Exactly. And you know, this is, could be a fun planning thing too. It's like you're planning for it all week. You're going to maybe, maybe we'll You're going to dress like a cop, darling. <laughs> you're going to dress like a cop. Right. We can go into fantasy. We can go into role playing. We can uh, meet at a restaurant, pretend we don't know each other. Or maybe we'll do some of those tantric practices Sriambika taught us at the workshop. You know, <laughs> you know? so, um, so it, you know, you have to bring yourself to it. Yeah, but a lot of people, I feel they're afraid of fantasy, like even sharing that desire. It's like, how am I going to share this desire if she's my wife or he's my husband? You know, mm -hmm. it's like, this is too sacred, this is too slutty, or this is too dirty. I don't do that in this environment. So how can we learn to share that desire and to understand 
There's nothing shameful about having fantasies. And what a beautiful blessing to be able to share that with the one you love. Yeah. Well, it's such a great question, Karina. I have to say, you know, fantasy plays an important role in, in our sexual life. Every individual. Fantasy plays a very important role um, because it is the place that, that exists inside of us that allows us to go to places where we wouldn't normally go. And, and it really supports and, and opening up arousal in our body. And so when we, when we are willing to share such an intimate part of ourselves, you're really inviting more intimacy into the relationship. Like, wow, I've got this fantasy. And you know, most fantasies, the majority of them are better left as fantasies. So sometimes the fun of it is just playing it out or you know, you know, speaking about it in, during a sexual act. The fun part maybe isn't actually going out and doing it. You know, because could, it could be dangerous. Sharing your secret, <laughs> like you did with your girlfriends. Like, guess what? Like, it's a secret. Just like sharing a secret, right? Yes, yes, exactly. And it's and it's it's sweet. You know, it's something that then only the two of you share, and it's you know, it's a very important piece here uh, in building the intimacy. Because that's the thing that's often missing in really, really good sex is intimacy. Okay, what what does intimacy have to do with sex? <laughs> well, most people would think intimacy is sex, yeah. but actually not all sex is intimate. Oh, no? Oh, no. Okay. In fact, in, in, among a lot of long-term relationships, the sex stops being intimate. It becomes much more mechanical. Mm. So it's just like, like this technique. This, okay, she just came physical. already. I came already. I'm going to go to sleep. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm done. Can you be done now? <laughs> right. Not very intimate. And uh, if anything, what a lot of couples complain about over time is that, that that's it, is that the sex stops being special. It stops being intimate. It stops having a component that feels like there's connection. It's just, it's just more physical. So, so in fantasy, how does that create intimacy? If it's something dark or it's something I'm, you know, ashamed of. Well, if you're my best friend and I tell you my, my deepest, darkest secrets, that creates an intimate connection between us, even if we're not having sex, right? There's yeah. an intimacy in our friendship. And so in the same way in relationships, right, when you can share those, those really like, very tender and almost vulnerable parts of you, like, whoa, I actually think about this sometimes and, you know, it would be fun if you would whisper this in my ear while we're making love. It, you know, it, it really, it definitely amps it up. You know, we're talking about spicing up in the bedroom. This is one of the ways to do it, for sure. Okay, so fantasy. Let's say there are some fantasies, like you say, it's better to get them in your head and imagination than acting upon them. But what happens if I have a desire or a fantasy that it's possible that I really want to live? Like, for example, a threesome. I think a threesome is one of the fantasies that it's... It's pretty, it's pretty yeah, <laughs> universal in, in general. Like, how do you share that with your partner? Well, you know, again, I would say let's start by just playing it out in the bedroom, like as if, right? As if there was another man in the room, you know, what would we be doing to you? Oh, I'm glad you chose a man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would we be doing to you? What would that, you know, how, he would be doing this to you and how would that look? And how, what would you want him to do to you next? And, you know, sort of playing it out in a verbal sense where it's nice and safe. And then then it kind of can feel like, oh, well, actually, I think I feel pretty comfortable with this. Why don't we actually see how we can find this other hot gentleman who happens to have a police officer costume? <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> but sexual stimulation in an uh, intellectual way, you say that's one of the keys, yes, right? Like yes. also, what about like sexting or texting? I mean, yeah. those kind of tools, like what else can we do? Well, so, I mean, the biggest sex organ is really the brain. Yeah. And we know a lot of oh, us really? know that. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder I'm like super orgasmic all day. Because <laughs> you're thinking about exactly. it. Exactly. My imagination is wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so as you mentioned, sexting or texting, another really great way to cultivate the intimacy in the relationship. You know, it's sort of like you're in two different places all day long, right? Most of you have different jobs and you're, in, you're maybe you work in different parts of the house, whatever it is, um, you're usually not connected the whole day. And then you come together at the end of the day hoping that there's going to be some kind of sexual spark and that's like the last thing on one of your minds. You have to create the sexual spark. You have to create the sexual spark and you want to sort of like introduce it at the beginning of the day, have it going throughout the day, you know, give little hints. And like let, a foreplay? Like a foreplay, exactly. 
Little like, hints like what? Little hints like, yeah. oh, I can't wait to eat you up. <laughs> or, you know, I don't, I just can't wait to get my hands all over you. You're so sexy. You know, one of my favorite things is sometimes when my husband calls and I say, hi, sexy. And I can just tell that his oh, whole attitude. Your and yours. <laughs> yeah, from that point on, I think the rest of our conversation is going to go really well. <laughs> Yeah, because I can see it, like, even right now, the shift, when you thought about, like, saying that to your husband, like, had a change in you. Yeah. So it creates also that openness, right? But it starts with the brain more than your body, as I understand. Like, at the beginning of the relationship is the chemical, so your body automatically goes there. Produces it. And then you have to stimulate those chemicals with those thoughts. Yes to be able to create that mood in your physical body? Yes, exactly. That would support it a great deal. I mean, the physical body can can take place here. You know, it's like, in other words, you can definitely uh, count on your physical body, your hormones to play a part in your sexual desire. But sometimes that changes over time. And sometimes, you know, for a woman, it's only really once a month when that happens. And so, you need really? a, a little support, you know? <laughs> really, once a month? When? <laughs> Tell me. During ovulation. <laughs> oh, that's really when your body's just like... Yeah, when a woman ovulates is when she's most desiring sex. Okay. So that's when she's able to produce babies, so it makes sense. But of course, some women also feel a lot of sexual desire right before they menstruate which is a mystery to a lot of people, but it's true. And so that's another really prime time to take advantage of the physical body's needs. But besides all that, you really just, um, couples need to just make a dedicated space for this. Like if, that, if it's not something that they really decide together that this is important for them, then it's going to create some friction in the relationship. Yeah, because the bond is not there, the intimacy is not there, right? And that's what made you special, and that's why you wanted to get married or be with that person. It was like, it started all because like of the sex and intimacy. Mm -hmm. And then that's gone, and then it's just like the responsibilities, like if you had with your business partner or your roommate. Exactly, yeah. So we talked a little bit about women, and now uh, how can we see that in men? How come a man get bored so easily? And also, what can they do? Like, let's shift it a little bit to the man's to point the of guys. view. Yeah, please. Yeah. Listen, guys. <laughs> Listen up, guys. <laughs> Listen up, guys. <laughs> so, you know, just like, just like any situation, you know, anything that you have for too long is just, you know, just, you know, you, you want a new car, you can't wait to get that new car, you're so excited when you get the new car, and then three months later, you know, you've got McDonald's bags in the back, and it's a mess, and you're not that into it anymore. I mean, you're just, you're excited by it, but it's not, and then six months down the line, it's like, ah, eh, it's just my car, right? Well, relationship has a similar feeling to it. It's like, you know, that, that strong desire uh, that a man feels in the beginning um, can easily fade. The one thing about men is that all men are very visual. Men are visual. And it's just really important that we recognize that this is just the fact, right? And recognize that men will prefer to be able to see you and see your body and see you in, you know, whether it's a really sexy dress or a really sexy lingerie, or maybe they just like you naked. But the point is, is that if you're always in your PJs and your slippers, um, it's it doesn't really evoke that desire in them. Mm -hmm. And so if a woman is trying to have her man be more interested in her, then you know, consider creating a visual experience for him that would draw him to you. And it probably happened pretty immediately. Well, I like why you call it the visual experience because sometimes like women is like, oh, I need to dress up or like why lingerie? Like now we know why. Because men are drawn to that. Men are drawn to it. So like always looking for a little like hints, like they're more visual, so like pictures, that kind of sex thing, or well, or more. You would the be mind. you would create the, the visual experience yeah. for him. So so okay. so I would be the visual for him. Okay, so it's yeah. more through image and like looking sexy to the man than the mental stimulation, or both. 
Well, I mean, there's so many ways to go, right? There's so many oh, things. Please, that, right? please, we could just bring out a whole like, smorgasbord of great yeah, ideas. We'll, we'll try and like, them. let's say, like three top points. Four, specifically to create more spice in the yeah, relationship. Yeah. Well, so we talked about creating more intimacy, like through through you know dropping hints and 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 connecting throughout the day. You know, it, it helps if both partners are involved in that. Or months right. or years. Or months <laughs> or years. Yes, of course. Um, creating more of a visual experience for him. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've got so many possible hints. One of the things I really want to say that I think shouldn't be left unsaid is that um, another thing that happens in relationship is that partners sometimes be, they take for granted that the other person's going to be there for them, and so they stop taking care of themselves. Oh yeah, yeah, and and in that stop, they gain weight. They gain weight, or they just stop, you know, connecting with their body. And um, you know, women in particular, but men too, need to be like sexual energy is in the body, right? It's not up here where most people live from the neck up. It's it's actually in your body. So if you aren't in your body, you can't experience, and you certainly can't express sexual energy. So I, I definitely recommend, you know, whatever it is, if, if you think that you're not beautiful, get over it and just be in love with yourself. But more importantly, get back in your body, dance, exercise, garden, do whatever it is that you need to do to feel connected to your body again, because that is where sexual energy lives. It doesn't live anywhere else. I mean, of course, we're talking also about that, you know, it does live in the mind, yeah. but you're not going to access it in your body in any other way. So one of the things I really recommend is like do some exercise together, dance together, go for a jog together, or work out together. These are things that really support a couple to get more physical, and then so that when they get into the bedroom, that physicality, they have access to it more easily. Mm, and also, I think with dance, now that you mentioned that, I think it's a great tool. Like I've used it with you know some ex-boyfriends. <laughs> you know, like the dancing, because then you understand also how like you mentioned in some of your uh, retreats and, and coaching that breathing together or like moving together gives you a lot of hints on how can you translate that into sex. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because I, I feel that's fascinating. You mean, so how um, moving together like in a, in a dance? Yeah, like you, how can you bring the dance, you know, like tango, yeah. you know, that is like, love me, hate me, love me, you know, or like <laughs> the lambada, you know, like there's dance where, where the, guide, guy, the guy guides you and you dance yeah. together and you get turned mm, on so just sexy. by dancing. So, so sexy. How do you bring that to the bedroom? That Why is dance so powerful? You know, I, I highly recommend dance for couples, especially partner dancing, you know, where the man leads, because, um, because it creates a, a polarity, first of all. So in, in the dance itself, there's, a, there's the masculine polarity and the feminine polarity. And let's just talk about polarity for a minute, dance or no dance. I mean, that is ultimately what we need in order to have sexual desire. Period. Polarity. Polarity. Yeah. So, why do you mean? What do you mean by that? So, and then this goes for male relationships, male, man on man, woman on woman, or man and woman. It doesn't matter. That polarity where there's a distinct masculine figure and a distinct feminine figure, and the farther apart they are in their poles, the more sexual tension there will be, and tension in a good way. So, so the more sexual attraction is created because of that. That polar opposite, right? So what happens is in relationship, we often get sort of closer to the middle and he becomes less masculine because he's like, ah, I don't really need to show up that way so much anymore. Or maybe she becomes a little more dominant and, 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 and now she's becoming more masculine in the relationship and he's becoming technically... Or like the guy, like you become the dude, like the friend, like drinking beer and watching TV or, or vice versa, right? Uh, right. <laughs> like, oh my God, like, why, how come you tell me like my shoes doesn't look good? You know? Yeah, yeah. So they like just girl, become yeah. buddies. Mm. Become buddies, and and then there's less te sexual tension, and therefore you can't really have long-term sexual attraction when there isn't polarity. So something like dance and other things as well um, will create more of that distance, and then when he's leading, she can surrender, and it just becomes such a beautiful catalyst for sexual energy.
But that's amazing. Imagine you go dancing and then you go and have sex, or you go for a hike and then you go and have sex. So there's many ways to lose calories, take care of yourself, <laughs> exercise, bond, and then you'll have great sex. It's a healthy life overall. <laughs> Wow, how can I go through the resistance and blocks in my head that tell me, oh, I'm not into sex, I'm not interested, I don't want to commit, you know, it's not worth it. Because I've heard, you know, yeah. men and women say that. Yeah. It's like we're together, you know. Well, I think it's important to ask yourself why. Like, what is it about sex that isn't interesting to you right now? Is it, is it like physically I'm not feeling it or I just don't really want to get... I don't want to bother with him or her. She's too much trouble or, you know, he's not paying attention to me in a certain way, so I'm going to withhold it. You know, that that happens a lot. A lot of withholding happens in relationships. So I think we have to figure out and ask ourselves honestly, why is that? What is what is the hold up? If we don't have an honest conversation with ourselves, then we're never going to be able to get to the other side. And sometimes it just doesn't matter to us anymore. But it has to matter if you want a, like a long-term relationship. If you want a successful, successful. long-term relationship and a life well-lived, sex is essential. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. So, okay, just to finish up the show, I have like three questions for you. Okay. So for all of you that haven't read a lot about sex but want to know like a little things, these are the three things. Top three sex, like, different positions. Top three sex positions? Yeah, 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 to spice it up. Oh, to spice it up. Yeah. Okay. You know, I like reverse cowgirl. <laughs> reverse cowgirl. Okay, <laughs> that's a good one. That's a fun one to spice it up. I mean, we're talking like, okay, let's get out of missionary or her being on top, like something totally different. Exactly. Um, you know, so a reverse cowgirl could be a really fun one to try, but I think also getting it out of the bedroom and trying sex on a couch or on a chair or outside in the garden in or the you know, in the kitchen on a counter, like just it's, it's, it's the position, but it's also getting out of the place where you normally fall asleep. Oh, because then the bed is just like, oh, we watch TV and we go to sleep. We, this is what we do here. We sleep and we, <laughs> we okay, watch TV. Okay, that's a good one. It, it doesn't create an environment for a lot of uh, juiciness unless you make it that way. So getting out of the bedroom really helps. Okay, the second one, power of seduction. So how, like, how can we seduce during the day? I would put like an example or a scenario that we can use like to start up something. Such a great question. I love seduction. Definitely. I know you do. <laughs> She's the expert in seduction. Like sometimes it's like, Tree, how, how can I seduce? How can I feel more, you know, seduct, like seduce, how do you, how seductive. You seductive. And I call her up and she gives me all the scoop. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, oh, that's a nice ass. Anyway, seduction. Seduction. Yeah. It's good to know how your partner likes to be seduced. So sometimes we have our own idea of what would seduce our partner, and that's good too. Definitely bring your own ideas. Mm -hmm. um, but also get into some inquiry with your partner. Like, what would you like? Like, what would you want me to say to you? How would you want me to be with you? You know, and find out from your partner exactly what it is that they would love for you to do. It's something that people just don't do enough is really ask questions. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know you could ask your partner, Imagine so that, that. that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Wow, and the third one, foreplay, like physical foreplay. Take more time, slowing it down, you said at the beginning, but how do you slow it down? Well, you know, I think foreplay begins first thing in the morning. I think foreplay is something. Learning. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that happens, you know, in a, in a glance, in a, a, a touch. It's something that happens when you're washing the dishes. It, you know, it, you know, somebody comes up behind you and rubs their body on you and kisses your neck. I mean, that's foreplay. So it's it's not just in the bedroom. That's I think something that we need to remember that we don't save the affection and the foreplay just for the bedroom. Find other places and other ways where you can touch one another and 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 kiss and lick one another and have fun with it. 
Oh, wow. I don't know. This is sounding so amazing that I think I'm, <clears throat> I'm ready for like a kiss and a lick. <laughs> but anyway, Tree, thank you so much for being with mm -hmm. us. I mean, there's so much to learn and so much to talk about that I would like to open the invitation so you can come back and because you have like so many different skills that I would love to share with everybody, but we don't have time. But where, where can we find you? Because I know you do sessions and workshops and retreats. Can you give us your website? Absolutely. I'm at ecstaticawareness.com. That's ecstaticawareness.com. And uh, yeah, you can find me. We can have a consultation, talk about what your desire is, talk about what you're looking for, and see how we can work together. Yay! Thank you, Tree, for being Thank here. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Yeah, you look amazing, by the way. Aww. I can tell you're happily married for two years, <laughs> successful, and spicing it up every day. Spicing so, it up. <laughs> except, and, yeah, you usually see the husband. Gorgeous, gorgeous couple. <laughs> So thank you, Tree, and thank you all for being with me here today in Coffee, Tea, or Sex. And yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about sex, and I don't even know what to say anymore because I'm thinking about sex. So yeah, I keep thinking about sex. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs>